Okay, thank you. If, um, Pine Gate, sorry, I couldn't find it on my, if y'all would like to come up to present, uh, we would gladly welcome you. My name is Michaela Newsom and I'm the Development Project Manager of the Mormon Solar Project. On behalf of Pine Gate Renewables, thank you for giving us this opportunity to present the special tech application and appreciate it. Ms. Michaela, could you speak up just yes. a little bit? Of course. Of course. Yeah. We're aware of the concerns that Brooks County residents have in protecting agriculture, the environment, and rural characteristics of their county. We share a desire to protect these values while simultaneously facilitating investment in the community. In that regard, we would like to highlight key aspects of our application to demonstrate how our project will fully comply with the county solar ordinance. As shown in the comprehensive site plan submitted with our application, we intend to construct, own, and operate an 80 megawatts AC solar facility. The project will be on 940 acres, meets from five separate landowners over a 40 year term, uh, which we have a 35 year term with two extensions, but we'll lose 40 years. To reduce the impact on agriculture, our plans include the following considerations. We will be limiting the disturbance to approximately two thirds of the lease area, and we will be fully responsible for the financing and labor of decommissioning of the site, removing all solar and erosion control equipment and restoring soils to their original condition per the decommissioning and mitigation plan we provided on page ZPP 106 and APP 101 of the application. We also stop, need to stop right there and let me ask you a question. Yes. You say you will be taking the burden for decommissioning of the solar farm? Yes. So Pine Is that not your responsibility to do anyway? I just wanted to emphasize that point. Um, but I, is that not your responsibility? Yeah, of course. Right? That, that's the okay. responsibility of the owner to decommission. Okay. Thank yes. you. Of course. Um, so to ensure that um, you all are comfortable with us doing this and that we will decommission, we will be posting a decommissioning bond with the county so we're held to this promise. In addition, our facility will be limited to 80 megawatts by federal PURPA regulations, meaning at no point we will request additional acreage than what is being proposed today, and there will be no possibility for expansion post-construction. So the land that we ask for today, it will not expand at no point in the future, at no point after getting this approval, it will stay the same, and it will be the same acreage. It should be noted that this project will only temporarily pause agricultural production on less than 0.5% of the 178,000 plus acres of farmland in Brooks County. This will have a negligible effect on agricultural production overall because active farmland has grown by 20% in the county since 2012 according to the USDA Farm Census. Once the project is operational, there will essentially be no other disturbance to the land for 40 years. We believe that a pause on farming and the use of pesticides can allow for regeneration of the soil, cleaner groundwater, and potentially lead to more fertile crops in the future. <laughs> to mitigate the impact of rural character of the area, a setback of 100 feet from public right-of-ways, 500 feet from any residences, and 50 feet from property lines have been followed, as shown on page ZPP 101. And if you could look to the visual right now. In addition, the project will be completely screened from public view at the start of operations. In any areas without a natural vegetative buffer to block the view, a 10-foot earthen berm and the double row of 5-foot evergreens on top will be installed. APP 106, as shown here, of the site plan contains computer renderings created by a third-party engineer, Kim Horn, to show what this will look like. And we do have a representative of Kim Horn here today. Um, but I just kind of wanted to touch on this specifically. So, as you can see, at planting, um, or essentially once construction is complete, there will be no view of panels. And this location is specifically looking at off of the Valdosta Highway. 
Um, and you can also see the rendering of what the, um, uh, how the evergreens on top will be offset on top of the, the berm. Uh, if you want to flip to the next location. And so this is an example of uh, an area that already has natural vegetation to screen. So there will be no view of the project at all in this area. Um, I can't see exactly. <coughs> so let me ask you a question. Are you going to have somebody in <coughs> that will make sure these evergreens are watered and stay alive and not yes. let them die and yes. forget about them? Yes, so we will have monthly maintenance be coming on site to ensure that uh, the vegetative buffer is staying up to code and they'll also just be doing a check of the panels and things like that, um, pretty standard for all of our projects. So. And then there's a last page. Um, so this is just another view. Uh, we'll this is off Guest Road, uh, just showing the existing conditions, what it will look like with the berm. Um, and then after five years of growth, showing it's still 100% screen. And, and just to note, um, we will be following the code saying that the evergreens will be a minimum of 10 feet after five years. So, um, can, I ask, can I ask you a question? Of course. Before you get too much further. Um, you stated that y'all done a study that the farmland in Brooks County has grown by 20%, mm -hmm. correct? Yes. And, but you're, you're asking for us to take a thousand acres of that back out of it. Mm -hmm. So, with that being said, and, and with it obvious that, that agriculture is the engine that drives our economy here, mm -hmm. how does this benefit the people of Brooks County? Yeah, so um, I would say that, you know, there's other ways for us to benefit the county other than, you know, I know Liz mentioned that they will not create jobs. Um, but I would like to point out that we've already started engagement with the um, work based learning coordinator at Brooks County Schools, um, Howard Akers, and he is setting up a um, day for Blue Ridge Power to come in person, speak to high school students about the programs that we have, and then they're also going to um, have a separate meeting with um, likely the seniors and just speak through that program to hopefully provide some opportunities there. And we also... Would that be opportunities in Brooks County, or would that be opportunities for those children to go elsewhere to, to be involved? So we have, just on our team, 10 projects in Georgia, all of them being in South Georgia. So, you know, we But again, if it would not be in Brooks County. I can't say now that it would be in Brooks County, okay. but it would still be job opportunities that would be okay. available. I understand, I understand. All right, that's for the, that's for the, the future. Yeah. But what about the current ag people that work in agriculture now? You're going to take thousands of acres out of that where they work. So, what, what about those people? yeah, I, I think when our landowners get a chance to speak, they'll be able to touch on this. But, you know, it's honestly a situation where it's their land and they've seen this as a new opportunity for themselves to have a, a good source of income and to honestly have less work. You know, they're, they've been working hard their whole lives and they saw this as a great opportunity to help their families and have a brighter future. Um, I think that, you know, a lot of the families that are in this project have brought a lot of agriculture to the county. Um, you know, some in particular have brought thousands of acres into ag that were not previously in ag. Um, so I think, you know, 940 acres on the grand scheme of 780,000 acres is a drop in the bucket and target owners is a drop in the bucket compared to what they've done so far. Um, and you know, the project itself, once it's constructed, it, it gives, like I said, a chance for the land to take a rest. Um, one of our landowners will touch on, you know, facts and figures about how many pesticides, fertilizers will no longer be used on that land now that it's going into solar, um, which I think is an important point if, if we are concerned about wetlands and, and clean water. I think that's a, a huge point and, you know, it, it's it's definitely going to give that land a chance to be, you know, hopefully more fruitful in the future, so. I, I have a question and I, I was just looking through the pictures. In, in, in all, in, in, in the map, in, in all this acreage, we talked about the, the noise. Where will the transformer 
portion B and what is the um, distance between those and residential <coughs> or yeah. So, so every red one is a is a transformer. So essentially, the loudest items on the site are going to be the inverters. So as you can see here on the rendering they did, they took the exact equipment that we're going to be using, which was in the specification sheet that I provided, um, and did a rendering to show the highest areas of noise. Um, and when we did this study, it was found and reported in the study that the loudest noise to be heard by any leader, including landowners who live on the property, is going to be 50 decibels. Um, so that's comparable to the sound of a running refrigerator that's actually quieter than an AC unit. Um, so I, I you know, can't speak to the other project and the equipment they use and the noise levels that came from that. Um, but we use a third-party engineer. They saw our equipment. Uh, they've done these renderings before. Um, and this is what it showed. So. Um, you can see here the two decibels is for the one to a uh, refrigerator, but yeah, I was just you know, looking. I was just looking yeah. at that in your yeah. Is so my question. you know, when you're right where the inverter is, it is as loud as 79 decibels, which is about the sound of the drill. Um, but there are no residents in where the inverters will be because that is the big What is the what is area. the distance between those and the nearest residents? Um, so the nearest or closest resident, I would say, is going to be. The England property uh, or Daniel England. Um, I don't have the exact fee, but I can get that for you. Um, Just to ask, I mean. Yeah, so I, it's at least 500 feet because okay. we buffered 500 feet from every home. Okay. So, yeah, even at 500 feet, um, you know, you're only very good to test the location. So, it's not the right refrigerator. Let me ask you this Does the transformers and the inverters sit on the same path? Um, so, if we could pull it to the yeah, So the one transformer is going to be in the parcel up here, um, and then the inverters are all where the little kind of edges are, where the lines end. Um, so there's one here and one here. Um, and this is all on, on Mr. Howard Boston's property. Um, so that's in section one? Uh, yep, in section one. So yeah, uh, Mr. Lawson. So you've got two transformers in one? You no, know, so there's one transformer for the for the whole site. Or what did you just say about there's two, two inverters? No, so there's, I was saying there's inverters at each of these ends, uh, which was on here. Uh, that's essentially where the inverters are, and this is where the transformer is. So essentially one transformer here, and then the rest are inverters. Is that your okay. substation as well? Yes. <coughs> Thank you, bro. We didn't get we didn't mean to get you no, off track. Okay. You were it's doing okay. really well. That was the next thing on my talking point. So okay. thank you for leading me into it. Um, and, you know, we can answer any more questions that you have on that as well. We're okay. happy to walk through the with you guys. Um, and also with Jimmy Horn um, that you're today. So. Um, so, now that I've talked a little bit about some of the impacts on rural character and how we're meeting those, um, I'd like to move on to the impacts on the environment. Um, and just to start, I'd like to say we also brought our environmental consultant, Jim Baxter. Um, he's here to answer any specific questions that you all may have, uh, whether it's a species, whether it's a species, things of that nature. Um, he went out and did most of the work himself. So, um, so to start, uh, to mitigate the environmental impacts, the project plan includes following considerations. Page CPP 103 and 103A, uh, you could look to the sediment and erosion control plan. It provides a preliminary sediment and erosion control plan. This ensures any erosion or sediment disturbed during construction does not travel off site or into waterways. The reasoning for not having a Georgia DP approved sediment and erosion control plan at this point is because we must have county approval first before we can go to that next step. So uh, this plan is going to be subject to final review by the Georgia DPD. Um, and since Brooks County is not a local issuing authority, we will have to go to them for all town water permitting. Um, but we will, of course, provide all approved plans from the Georgia EPD um, once they are given and shared with the 
instruction and go over with our seniors any questions there might be on that. Uh, if you could go to the DNLS, please. So this map is just outlining um, the survey that was done by Jim uh, to look at endangered species. So um, Terracon thoroughly surveyed the site, and the only species that was seen was a single gopher tortoise, as shown on this page. The species is bred at the state level. Um, it used to be a candidate species, but was actually taken off of the candidate species list due to their <coughs> So Pinegate has collaborated with Terracon in response to finding a threatened species on the site by creating a habitat mitigation plan. And this can be found on page EPP 104A and 104B of the application. The Georgia DNR recommends a 15-foot buffer from any uh, burrows found, but we will be placing a conservative 25-foot buffer around all the burrows. We'll also be placing a silt fence at the southern edge of the 25-foot buffer to minimize the chance of any species climbing onto the construction site. So uh, it's a little hard to see, but um, they're all the one species that was found was within the Georgia Power right-of-way, which actually isn't in our lease area, but still near the project. Um, and there was six <coughs> other inactive burrows found um, or abandoned. Um, so we plan to essentially put a silt fence below it to encourage them to go upwards and, and protect them from the construction site. Um, so we, during construction, we're also going to be handing out educational materials. Um, and if any species are seen on site, uh, Jim will immediately be called, and ourselves and Jim and his team at Terracon will work together with the DNR to come up with a plan to go with the species. So. Um, other things that we're doing to help and protect species is going to be using best management practices. So these are things like using a natural fiber erosion mesh to prevent any wildlife entanglement. And then also, uh, as a standard, we use wildlife-friendly fencing to help minimize habitat uh, fragmentation. Or sorry, fragmentation. Um, and we do this to allow, essentially, species, once the, the project is built, um, to <coughs> freely roam through and, and outside of the, the solar field. And, and we find, actually, a lot of species end up finding that area as sort of a safe haven. Uh, these are going to hunt. Um, larger species can't get in, like deer, uh, but it allows those smaller animals to still travel in and out, uh, including the open forest. Um, and so uh, next to address is the tree clearing. So on ZPP 107, there is a tree clearing map that shows that only 9.6% of the total parcel acreage, um, just want to be clear, parcel acreage versus lease acreage is at 9.6%. Um, will be cleared for this project, and some of which would have already been cleared by landowners for timber sale. Um, and to address the pecan trees that were not included, um, since this is our crop, <coughs> we only included naturally occurring vegetation, um, and we actually didn't realize until a bit later that the area actually on Mr. Jerry Sapp's property is also a timber farm that he has planned on cutting either way before we even approached him for the project. Uh, so that's why that, that pecan farm was not included since it is a crop and it would have been cut. Um, but we still included the, the timber area with the pines. Um, and that's in the first portion on, on Jerry's property. Um, and so we also had a tree uh, assessment survey done. Um, ZPP 7, or sorry, 107A. And this essentially went out and identified different tree quantity, quality, and species type. Um, this is actually done by Francis and her team. And this report will essentially be utilized to then replant the same quantities and species of trees that were present before the project was built. Um, and this is a part of our, our decommissioning plan to essentially put the, the land as, as close back to as it was before. So, um, if you go to the wetlands map. So, in regards to wetlands, a wetland delineation was completed for the project by Terracon, as shown on APP 107. It was determined that this project will have no disturbance to jurisdictional wetlands and minimal disturbance to non-jurisdictional wetlands. To note, the main reason for numerous access roads and non-continued contiguous design of the facility so that the project can avoid these wetlands, as you can see up on here, 
um, despite the increased costs. We always buffer 25 feet um, on these projects. And um, if you have any specific questions on that, Jim actually did the delineation and was out there with the U.S. Army Corps uh, verifying the uh, findings of that survey. So we'd be happy to answer any questions related to that. To close out this review, we would like to directly to respond to concerns highlighted in the, in the staff report. While the facility itself will not create permanent jobs, there's opportunities for employment through Blue Ridge Power, as I mentioned. Um, and we're you know, excited to see what opportunities can arise from that. I've already you know, started some conversations there and, and hope to have some power-up events in the community. Um, the economic benefit the county will receive from this project should also be noted. Um, we were working with the Economic Development uh, Department on tax abatement, and uh, when that abatement was, or tax abatement was in discussion, uh, the structure would be that we would pay uh, $600,000 the first year, part of that being to the Economic Development Department as part of their service fee, and uh, the rest being in taxes. Um, and at the end of the 40 year life, the total would have been $2.9 million. Um, so, this is definitely a considerable amount of revenue. Obviously, those discussions still need to be had about exactly what the payment structure would be, things of that nature. Um, so, these were just estimates that we face off. And that's over like a 40 year period? Yes, 40 years. Um, so we're hoping that we can continue to, you know, discuss this plan and, and talk about how, you know, the, the tax uh, money that's going to come from this project can help the community in different ways. So we recognize the concern over potential wear to local roads as well, um, and particularly unpaved roads. So we want to be a true partner to Brooks County, um, and in order to mitigate this issue, we'd like to propose that the planning board recommend we sign a road use agreement guaranteeing we maintain the roads for their existing state as a condition of our <coughs> special exception approval. Um, so this can involve maintaining them during the construction of the project and that they are put in their previous condition. Finally, we note that the staff report recommends denial of the project despite our application abiding by all required codes. We would like to highlight that the purpose set forth in the solar ordinance is to, quote, encourage development of solar facilities outside of urban development areas. And thus, a solar is a permitted use through the special exception within the ordinance. In this regard, the landowners are here in support as they believe the project will not only support their farmland, but also their rural lifestyle. And because they have the right under the Georgia Constitution to use their land in any legal matters to which they choose without hindrance. That's all I have. Are there any <coughs> questions I can touch on or any questions for our consultants? How long have your been Since 2014. No, but I will say I don't think there is any company who has decommissioned a solar project just with solar, you know, coming on the rise over the last, you know, 20 years, 30 years. Um, that has not happened yet, but that's why we're, you know, taking extra steps like setting up a decommissioning bond. That way, under any circumstance, there's money set aside to allow for decommissioning, although, of course, as we've said, that is our responsibility that we will take to that is just sort of an insurance, per se. But you have the decommissioned one, so these numbers are just... Yeah, they're, they're third-party estimates that we got from Kimley Horn. Um, so they work on solar projects across the country, um, and they essentially just use uh, typical statistics on um, how much it costs to decommission and... Um, I don't know, Francis, if you have anything you need to, to add to that? Yeah, I would say it's a very standardized <coughs> procedure. It's not something they don't just come up with it. Um, the engineers that work through these do them all the time. And um, I just want to emphasize that it's pretty standardized. It's nothing super crazy. Um, yeah. Currently, what are the percentages of recyclable materials in the current equipment? And what <coughs> is the storage parameters for? non-recyclable material. 
So we do, we did submit a waste management guideline. Um, as of the steel, that all gets recycled and, and resold for salvage value. As far as the panels, those will get sold for the parts within it and, and the precious minerals within the panels. Um, so I don't have exact percentages on, you know, what is it that is <coughs> recycled, but I can definitely get a report on that for okay. you. Yeah, I'd be happy to. What is the number of generating or producing sites you have currently, particularly so, Western North Carolina? I would have to look in Western North Carolina, but um, mm -hmm. we have one gigawatt of projects across the U.S. completed, and, and for reference, this project's 80 megawatts again. Um, so we're a pretty established company. We work in 26 states across the country, um, and we have another 12.6 gigawatts under development currently. Um, with the BIS project being one of them. So we, we've had a lot of experience in constructing, um, and I think the fact that we have Blue <coughs> Power as our sister company um, just shows that we're kind of there through the whole process. A lot of developers only do the development, getting the permits, and then they hand it off to some other construction company, but the fact that we are kind of a full-scale start-to-finish company allows us to really be there and affirm the quality of our work. So. Any production sites within 125 miles? <clears throat> yeah, so there is one in Richland County, South Carolina. I think, I'm not sure exactly how far that is, but we also have the Bulldog. <laughs> we do have two sites in Georgia, one of yep. which was placed in service as of December last year. Yep. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was trying to think geography-wise how close we were to the city. What day on the you say? Elbert County. Elbert County. And yeah. then there's one in Warren County as well, which is under construction. Yes. Yeah. And the one in Warren, I think that is kind of close to Sweet Valley, but we need to get the site. Um, I think I reached out to the offering that up, so I'm happy to get something set up. You can take a look at you know, the construction process, how that's going, um, and just speak to, to Blue Ridge Power directly on site and, and see, you know, the progress that's been going on so far. And be happy to put you in touch with some of the, you know, landowners, the county folks over there. We've been pretty happy with the work that we've done, so. Is there any other questions? So you said Blue Ridge Power is, is your third party? So is they... No, so we acquired Warner Brothers Construction in July of 2021, um, and so essentially after that acquisition, we renamed them to Blue Ridge Power. Um, so essentially, we just call them our sister company, um, but technically we acquired them. So. Any other questions? Unless you had anything else, we'll move on. Did you have anyone else?